somewhere else. I'd rather be here as to be anywhere tonight. Hallelujah. And I know that God wants to feed us. And we know that we're living in an hour right now when a lot of the world, they don't want this. They want hands laid on them. They want prophecy. And I believe in all of that. And they want, they want all the gifts, but they don't want this. I'd rather have this and be able to live right is to have all nine of the gifts and not be able to live right. Amen. It takes power to live right in this hour. It takes victory to live right in this hour. Just anybody don't live right in this hour. A lot of people... We look at some of the big, supposed to be gospel networks. Mm -hmm. And they think they're having the biggest revival that's ever been. But are they changing? Are they changing? They say, well, we had 500 call in and said they got saved. Do the change. If you get saved and you don't change, you never got saved. That's right. That's right. Amen. Somebody said you're judging. No, I ain't judging. It's the Word. When you get saved, you change. One man, he was running a bar, and they said, well, oh, what are you going to do about running your bar? Oh, he said, I'm going to use that to witness to the sinners. Drunk. Is that a joke? Or is that a joke? Amen. That, that is... But they believe it, Brother Doug. They believe that. Amen. One lady said she was a stripper for Jesus. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Said she was doing it for Jesus. Some of them playing ball for Jesus. Some of them driving race cars for Jesus. I don't believe I saw Peter doing none of that. Amen. And some of them doing different things. They say it's for Jesus. But I believe Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And His righteousness. And all of these things will be added unto you. Lord, I thank God tonight for victory. Thank God for power. Thank God for the love of the Holy Ghost. Thank God that we can have victory in this hour. And we know that hell is turned loose today. And it's, the land is full of all kinds of evil. But the power of God is also turned loose. And I see a lot of people today, Brother Doug, that a few years ago it was real easy for them to seem like to make it. But today they're in battles, they're in storms. But I believe if we will live like this word said live. Hello. I don't know, you may not like me, I'm from the old school. I don't believe in this junk some, that's got some stuff going today. I believe in this old-fashioned praying through, Amen. knowing you've got something you can feel. Oh, <laughs> Hallelujah. And speaking in tongues when you get the Holy Spirit. Most of them say, afraid of this Holy Ghost. <laughs> this ghost is holy, honey. It won't hurt you. Amen. It's that, it's that mess out there in the world. But tonight, I, I, I feel this was... This was a scripture that I quoted all of my ministry. And just recently, God just gave me a fresh message on it. And it's for the Christian. And if we ever needed to get a hold of something in this hour that'll keep us, we need to get a hold of the Word of God now. And the Word of God will keep us. And outside of the Word, Brother Doug said it a while ago, if we're begotten by the Word, that makes us Word kids. And if we're a Word child, that makes us a Jesus kid. The Word is Jesus. Brother Doug, I believe sometimes folks think this book is just little black letters on white pages. Uh-uh. This book is Jesus. He came in the volume of the book. That's why he didn't have to be taught. He was the teacher. Somebody said, where did he learn these? Where did he go to school? He didn't need to go to school. He was the schoolhouse. He was the teacher. He was the book. He came in the volume of the book. He is the book. And if we don't get him inside of us like we need him inside of us, he made us some promises here. Brother Doug quoted a while ago. How these tables do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. That, that is the secret of that verse. According to 
through the power that worketh in us. A lot of folks, they don't go far enough to get that power. They feel the overflow of somebody else. But the Bible teaches us, be not drunk with wine, but be ye filled. He told you Be ye filled with the Spirit. And if we're full of the Spirit, we're going to be able to walk on devils like God's Word said we could. And I, I don't know about you. And I, I, I'm, I tell you, the devil... We, we talk about battle and we talk about problems. But the devil has got a problem right now. And somebody said, well, what is it? One of them is me. <laughs> yeah. When I got up this morning, I believe he said, hey, Pella, he's up again. <laughs> Amen. I believe it with all my heart. Honey, he don't mind somebody goes to church and warms a bench. But he don't like it when you, my high, when you go to church full of the power, full of the word. The devil don't like it because you are going to bother that rascal. He don't mind you sitting around and boo-hooing and, and saying you don't know where you're going to make it. He don't mind that. He don't even mind you go to church and sitting there just looking around over the house. But when you get to amen and praising God, pushing the word... He don't like that. No, sir, he don't like it. And I believe we ought to praise God more. You see the devil's crowd. They go out here, and they put all they got. Uh -huh. We go to church. Let me leave we out. This. I ain't going to have to go back home tonight and pray for lying. Pray because I lie. <laughs> Let me leave we out of this. Some people go to church and they sit down at the preacher preaching real good every once in a while they go. <laughs> Supposing cheerleaders did that in a ball game. Somebody just made a three point. And they go. And the crowd goes. <laughs> I told our people, I said, if that's all you got is a head nod, I don't want it. <laughs> I said, reach down here and get you an amen. Down on the pit free and bring it out. Uh -huh. yeah. And then again, some of them got this little half mass hand raised. means somebody's dead. <laughs> if you're going to raise it, put it up. Oh, put it up. And if you're going to holler glory, holler it. <laughs> Honey, they they. They don't worry about the game. They grab the man's hat in front of him and take a piece out of it, bite a piece out of it, throw it on the floor and jump up down on it. They don't mind that. Why don't we do something? God's looking. Uh, my brother preached Monday night at our church, and, and I believe he preached for you when you're down on Rum Creek, Brother Glenn. And uh, he was talking about, you know, if, if he, he's a carpenter by trade, but he's God's man in the spirit. And he was talking about, somebody said, well, do you qualify for the job? Yeah, I qualify. And you let them know you qualify. But then in Jesus, how many feel like you're ready to go to heaven? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. We ought to know whether we qualify or not. We ought to know by the book. And we ought to be quicker to put our hand up for Jesus than we are for the natural. Amen. 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 I want you to go with me tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I, I, just, I just feel now, I, I could bring you, I could get in something, you know. But I'm not here for you to, for when this is over, for you to go home and say, my, 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 isn't he expounding? Isn't he this or that? I, I, I want to I wanna give you something that you can go home tonight and if hell hits you before daylight, you can go back in that word and say, wait a minute, devil, I heard something tonight in the book. And I want to just quote it back to you, devil. And if we ever needed God, we need Him now. Now, if you're not doing anything for God, you, 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 the devil ain't going to bother you, so you need to worry. And some folks he don't bother because they ain't got a thing he wants. But me, he's after me every day. I got some goodies he wants, but he ain't getting and I, I told him a while back, I said, Devil, you look like you would finally come. I ain't quit. Amen. Right. Right. And he did something to my wife a while back, tried to put a sickness on her, and I said, 
devil, you ought not to have done that. <laughs> Amen. Well, we, we don't have to. What, what kind of, what, what do you think he went through, that rascal? I was talking a while ago, he got problems. What do you think happened to him after he had Jesus killed? He thought, he thought he had him killed. He couldn't have killed Jesus. He couldn't have had him killed. Jesus laid his life down. What do you think that rascal thought when he was having a, 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 a party in hell and about that time Jesus started getting up? Don't you imagine he said, I wished I would have never said anything to try to get him killed. I, I, I just have one to contend with. Now I'm going to have millions. Millions of them. Honey, he'd have been a lot. Well, it had to go that way. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. And I'm going to read one verse. And you may not need this. I may just be preaching it for myself tonight. I need it every day. I need Jesus every day. And there have been times... That I preached my heart out. The morning fell. People shouted. People was blessed. But when I walked out of the church and went home, I went home with a load on my back. Somebody said, well, why? Did Jesus ever have a load? Went and prayed all night at times. And him, Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's just a little bunch of they don't have nobody. They don't have no nothing. And they ain't got nothing either. If you got Jesus, the Jesus that I that I found in this Bible, you're going to have battle. And you're going to have storm. But Jesus is going to be there to help you through them if you're serving. The Bible reads like this. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that, that ye above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now there's a lot of people today, Brother Doug, they, 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 they come to places in God and they say, I can't go any further. That's not true. That is not true. If we will serve God. If you'll notice this. And Brother Doug was talking a while ago about people taking the scriptures out of context. This scripture has been the most misused scripture about it in the Bible. I have quoted it in John past, but I don't know more. Like this. The Lord won't put no more on us. That's not even the Bible. The Bible don't even teach it. Right there it says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And God is faithful who will not suffer or allow or permit the devil to put more on you than you can bear. Amen. Amen. I, I, I hope I can get this over to you. Brother Doug... Do you have an old mic cord somewhere you ain't using? Any kind of a cord that you ain't using that I can... Just something that... Something that we can use here for just a minute. That, that, that would even do it. Tie that around you. Come here. Oh, if we can get this over. And I, I, I want to get it over to you. I, I, I didn't drive. 250 miles. Just to be right. Tie it through. Now, watch this. You ever been called a devil? Sure. <laughs> we'll use you for the devil for just a minute. Amen. Brother, we could have used you a minute. Get right over there. Now, whether we know it or not, God has got the devil on a leash. What do you mean, hold it? God knows 
and I hope we can get there. God knows what you and I can take. And every time we go through a bad time, it hardens us. It makes us have more fight in us against the devil. Well, glory in If you'd whip somebody 20 times and he said, I want to fight with you again, you said, okay, 21 times won't pass. <laughs> Because you done whipped him 20 times, you know you can do it one more time. We done whipped the devil a thousand times. One more battle won't matter that much. But we couldn't have whipped him if it hadn't been for God inside of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, here, we'll say this is the devil, and there's one of God's little kids. And, and the devil kind of called him down. Get in there with that face, kind of like you're praying, and he's really in a fight and in a storm. The devil said, I'm going to get him while he's down. There he goes. He goes to get him. And he reaches out to get him. God says, hold. All right. Come on. You feel the presence of him breathing down your shirt collar. And you feel all of his old powers. But God said, no. You can't have him. No, you ain't getting him. No, you ain't getting him. Honey, if we see that, we can go home tonight. And when the devil comes in like a flood, we can raise up a standard and say, Holy devil, I've got the Holy Ghost. You come on time. Y'all either got a battle, got sickness, and here the devil come, going to put another knot. He's going to slap something else on you. Reaches out there and just almost does it. Oh, Thank you, Brother Doug. That, honey, if we can just see what... You see, God, He, he ain't like a lot of folks think this. They think God just turns us loose and lets the wolves get... God said, I'll never leave you. I'll go with you always, even unto the end. And David said, I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging bread. God said, I'll supply all of your needs according to the riches in glory. And there's people right now, Brother Doug, I don't know how it is here. But in the last three months, we have, we live right there, three little towns. Camberville, Columbia, and Russell Springs. And they had a factory that covered Acres and acres and acres in Russell Springs, Kentucky. Union Underwire, Fruit of the Loom. And they had a big one in Camelsville. And those towns are not that big. And just recently they laid off, what was it, 1,401 deaths in Camelsville. Then they laid off 500 in Russell Springs. And then there was a factory there called Oshkosh. They laid all of that factory off and closed it and sent it to Mexico. And sent the, they're sending these others to Mexico and to other parts of the country. And they're making the third world countries, America, and they're making us third world countries. And our little people has come to the place, some of them don't know where they're going to work. They don't know what they're going to do. But God said, I'll supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. And I don't know how it'll be, Brother Doug, just before Jesus catches us out. And there are a lot of folks wanting to go through tribulation. And I said, hey, I've been in tribulation for 40 years. I don't want no more. I want to get out of here. Whoa, somebody praise God. Hello there. Maybe God let me preach on that one night, getting out of here. Honey, I'm going to tell you, somebody's looking forward to getting out of here. They're not going, they're not going to be here when Antichrist comes. Antichrist can't come till we get out. Amen. Oh, God help. Let's take this. Here was Abraham. He had waited 25 years for a son that God had promised. And Sarah 
said, Abraham, it ain't going to work. You just want us to go into Hagar. And right there's a message by Seth. The church world has said, this ain't going to work. Like the Jesus name Pentecostals are doing it. We're going we're to have to get it charismatic. We're going to have to go into Hagar. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Sarah's still okay. The Sarah church is still all right. We don't need a Hagar church. No way do we need a Hagar church. But Sarah said go into Hagar. She did not wait for the promise according to the book. But somebody is waiting for the promise revival according to the book. There was some dude came in for a meeting there in a certain church. And they saw what he was aiming to do. Somewhere or another he was going to get this. And I, I you, now, now don't, don't please. There's people laughs in the spirit. They do. But it's not just acting. They just laugh in the Holy Ghost. And they didn't get this laughing thing going, I guess. Old pastor said the revival's over. Bandits, you can leave. Of course, you know what the bandits, them that ain't where they ought to be, they'll prophesy all kinds of dooms. <laughs> yeah, you close me out. God will get you for this. And a little woman come to a friend of mine's camp meeting a while back, and she wanted to preach. And she said, Preacher, I got something to tell you, Pastor. You're going to die. And when you go back to find out about your, about your liver, that, that, that uh, biopsy had run up, you're going to find out you got problems. He said, not so, woman. <laughs> he, wouldn't, he wouldn't let her up preach. Not because she's a woman. She had a pushy spirit. You know, Jezebel had that spirit. Dominant. That's right. Amen. And he just felt like this, this ain't right. And he wouldn't do it. And she prophesied every kind of doom on him. And the one who wanted her priest, she prophesied to him. And then when his biopsy came back, his liver's perfect, nothing wrong. He told the church board, he said, see that they hear about this. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. See that them false prophets hear about this. Yeah, right. He looked that old guy right in the face again and called her a false prophet. We can know who we standing in God, and we don't have to back off and boo-hoo because some devil prophesied we're going to die. If we've stood for God, brother, oh, they, 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 they told on us. They said, your church will go down. You'll lose your anointing. You'll do this. You'll do that. I said, I'll not do it. And we didn't. Come on. Yeah. If you believe witchcraft, it'll work. But if you don't believe it, they can't put it on. They can bring the black cat and turn it loose on your porch, but pour it some milk and help it to get... Come on. Come on. You don't have to be afraid of it. They, 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 they can't no witch put no spirit in me. I'll pay for witches. I had one come through a prayer line in Mexico. And they said, oh, here comes a witch. I said, Lord, what would I do? I never prayed for them. <laughs> and when she got to me, I didn't know. And the people that, that, that I was there, I was there preaching for some missionaries. Not miss well, they, were, they, they went there and they were missionaries, stationaries. There. They weren't just going in and out. There, there's what they call border rat missionaries. Just run in and get a few pictures, come back to the States, get a big offer. But them old boys went down and lived right amongst the Mexicans. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't see this Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, those missionaries. They were, they were raised Amish one near Midianite. But they're good people, Brother Don. Serious. And that witch came through the line. I just reached out and laid hands on her. And the Holy Ghost hit me and it began to speak in tongues. And that pastor's wife grabbed my wife and said, Did you hear him? She said, No, I said he's just speaking in tongues. She said, He said in Spanish, Devil, we kill you. <laughs> Woo! They said we had no more trouble out of the witch. Honey, the witch can't do nothing with you if you're full of the Holy Ghost. But if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, she may be able to put a spell on you. Amen. 
And there's a lot of them trying to do it. There's a lot of witchcraft going on today, brother. They call it Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost ain't never had a thing to do with what they're doing. Amen. Some witchcraft's going on in the church when the pastor said this, everybody stand. I ain't standing. That's witchcraft. That's stubbornness. The Bible said rebellion is even as witchcraft. Glory to hell. Amen. She was, she was Abraham. Couldn't have no child. Waited 25 years. Finally, she came that boy along. About 20, 21 years old, God said, Now, take him to yonder's mountain and kill him. They none of us ever been there. None of them. That man was tempted, looked like above what he was able. But what I'm trying to show you, God did it for Abraham, he'll do it for you and I. Just as Abraham, when he started up that mountain, he had the wood, he had the knife, got the altar built. I can see Isaac. You know, a lot of people preach his Isaac. Little old thing. Uh-uh. I believe it's six foot two. 190 pounds. He was a type of Christ. And he was willing to lay right down on that altar without being made. He let his daddy buy him and lay him on that altar. And I believe they probably, Abraham probably done had the, the fire going. And he could feel the heat and hear the crackling of the thorns. And little Isaac said, Papa, when the, before he got on the altar, he said, here's the wood, here's the knife, here's the fox. Where's the lamb? He said, son, God will provide him Seth. A lamb for sacrifice. God will provide him Lay that little old boy on that altar for that young man, draw that knife back, probably coming down with it, and the angel said, Abraham, Abraham, do the lad no harm. I know you love me. Through it all, and it looked like it would have been beyond what Abraham could bear, but Abraham made up in his mind, get ready, God. If I kill this boy, you're going to raise him up. You done promised me children. But we will hold to the word. When the battle comes, a lot of us forget what the word says. But we're going to have to get the word so richly in us that we'll be like Abraham. Though I slay my son, you have got to raise him up. You promised me that he would be like the, like the stars of heaven. So you've got to raise him up. He's going back home with me walking. Not me carrying but before Abraham come down with that dagger, God said, do the lad no harm. Don't do him any harm. So what I'm getting at, God ain't going to ever let anything come your way that you can't get through if you'll go through it with God. Now, I don't know about you. You may not need these messages. I do I'm back where there's some giant devils. May not be none over here in West Virginia. In fact, about it, sometimes I think all of them move from West Virginia and come to Kentucky. Amen. You probably feel that way sometimes about Kentucky. They all moved from Kentucky and came to West Virginia. Amen. Mm -hmm. But everything that happens to us is for our good. Brother Isaac, God, God has showed me. He just helped me to see some things about myself. God, why can't I be in perfect health? You know what he told me? He said, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. He said, so when somebody comes down sick, you can look at them and say, if you live like me, you won't be sick. Amen. But if you read in, in, in Hebrews, Jesus, what word is it? Anyway, it means sickness. How that he was acquainted with those things. And the Bible said that there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common. Boy, looks like she's going through a terrible battle. Just common, just common. I come upon Paul when he got out from under all of them rocks and blood pouring from him everywhere. I said, Paul, hit the battle, ain't it? He said, just lie to flex him, brother, just lie to flex They left him for dead. Blood running everywhere. God help us. But if somebody calls us Jesus only, we're ready to boo hoo. Somebody calls us the devil, we're ready to quit. Now I gotta leave we out of this too. I've been called the devil and I didn't quit. I was in a church in Chicago one night. And they wanted they, I went there for revival and I didn't preach like two of the Dickens just wanted me to. Big old fellas, and they walked up at the church and called me a devil. One of my little girls said, He called my daddy a devil. I said, Lord, what am I supposed to do in times like this? He said, Raise your hands and praise me. When I did, the Holy Ghost hit me and began to speak in tongues. Them old boys said, Let's get out of here. The way they went. I'm going to tell you something, honey. The devil can't do nothing with God's Holy Ghost. Tongue talking people that lives like. He can do something with hypocrites. But he can't do nothing with God's men and God's women. And God's got some today living right, sisterly. He's got some living right. If he didn't have, hell would take over a middle. The devil would take it over. Amen. Now then we go to a... And the Bible said, There is no temptation taking you but such as come unto man. And Jesus was tempted in all parts, all points, as we are. Somebody said, was he tempted with the object sex? Yep. 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 But he overcame. He didn't get hung up on it. He didn't let it stop him. Sure he did. If he wasn't, his word ain't true. Every battle that you and I ever face, it ain't wrong, Brother Isaac, to be tempted. It, I've had an old people come up to me here and let you cry. And he said, Brother Stephen, they said some long shit my man, and I, I didn't know where they come from. I said, Hold on. You can't help what hits your mind, but you can stop it from getting in your heart. Brother, I, I can't keep birds from flying over my head, but I can keep them from building a nest in my house. You, you, you can't keep thoughts from coming to your mind, but you can say, devil, no. I'm going to tell you when you've seen When a thought comes to your mind, and, and it's terrible, and you say, well, I would do this if I knew nobody would find it out. You have just committed the sin in your heart. But if you say, devil, get out of here. I don't want that. I don't want nothing you've got to offer. I rebuke you. I resist you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the devil has got to get you. You, you may have to say that a dozen times a day, but the devil has got to get Amen. And we, we, they're going to be so kid, our man. Brother Stephen, I don't want to hear you preach. One stupid woman one time. They ain't all stupid, thank God. She wanted to know if this preacher ever had any bad dreams. If he hadn't, she wanted him to pray for her. But if he did, then he wasn't where he ought to be with God. If that ain't stupid, you can't even help what you dream. Boy, I'm getting down tonight and need to need a grief. But you don't have to act on it. Come on. Amen. You don't have to act on it. And in fact about it, if you're living for God and the devil can't get you while you're awake, he'll try to get you in your dreams. He'll try to get you when your flesh is asleep. 
and your subconscious mind is open. He'll try to get in there, but he can't get in there if you're full of the Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible said, be ye filled with the Spirit. Then the devil can't get in. Who knew? You all fight any battles over here with the devil? You go somewhere preaching and say, well, what's he preaching about? My son-in-law said, I don't know why they always talk about battles. I said, I never have none. <laughs> and boy, just in a little bit, hell come his way double. He said, I see now. <laughs> I see now. Hey man, I see now. Lost the, the garage. He was the station he was working at, running for years. His daddy running. They turned it over to him. The folks that had leased it to him sold out, sold it out from under. And then his brother that he'd worked with for years wouldn't let him go back in with him. He said, I see now. But it was for his good. And sometimes maybe a sickness can hit our bodies even. And we, we think, Lord, why? Where have I missed? It ain't that you've missed me. You may be living better then than you've ever lived. Sometimes things happen to us for our good. They sometimes, if nothing, never bothered us. Nothing. And we just felt good all the time. We might get into trouble. But if we got some problems we got to pray about every day, Anybody see what I'm saying? Does anybody, if we got some problems we got to pray about every day, as long as we're on our knees, the devil's going to have a problem getting us. He's not going to get on his knees with us. And the Bible said, They that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's a shadow. There's a shadow. There's a shadow. There's a shadow. I can walk in it. That's what some of us have done with God. If we'll stay in the shadow of God, the devil ain't coming up in that shadow. If he comes in that shadow, he's a saved devil. He ain't coming in that shadow. Oh, that, 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 that's where some of us have missed. We haven't stayed in the shadow of God. We'll talk about time. But if we were to dwell in that secret place of the Most High, which is the Holy Ghost, the devil cannot find us. He can't get to us. And if he does, he won't bother us. He'll be a saved devil. And he ain't going to get saved. No way is that rascal going to get saved. No and here, while we're at that, I don't know where the Lord heard me. Not one of He heard the devil. Did you know the devil prayed a prayer and God answered it? The devil said, "Don't cast me out into the deep." Stop from this going to the swine. God answered it. Why? God had created the devil, and even the devil, He was showing the devil. Mercy. Knowing he would be doomed for eternity. But he was showing how much more will God show you and I mercy? I did something wrong and I don't know whether God's heard me and forgive me or not. Hogwash, come on. God heard you if you prayed from your heart. The Bible said when you seek him with your whole heart, he will answer. He will answer. And the brother just quoted a while ago. And he said, you have not because you ask not. He said, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it'll be open. For everyone that asketh receive Everyone. Honey, that, I know I'm talking about the devil quite a bit tonight. But he is our adversary. And a lot of folks think if you won't mention him, he'll go away. <laughs> No, 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 no. Eh, eh, eh. I know of one dear brother, he, he got on this thing kind of positive. Everything positive. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really know it. And I went in that night and he'd just been talking to our sister pastor about all this positive stuff. And I preached the message that night, if you ain't got a grimoire, you ain't going to have no life. 
And the gray one is called negative. You know, a lot of Christians wants to run without a grandma. No negative, just everything fire. You know, no battles, no storms. But honey, they some negative. You gotta have a negative before you can. And the best negative I know of, the best ground I know of is solid rock. And Jesus is that solid rock. got your ground rock drove down in here. You're going to have some bright light. He's the ground. Amen. I pray for folks, and you have too, brother. My God, lay hands on one, you feel like, whoo, man, you're, you're coming apart. Lay hands on another, and they take everything you've got, and you reach it for more, and you ain't got no more. And they walk away and just drive. <laughs> and you say, Lord, what's wrong? He said, they ain't got no ground. You put the fire to them, but there was no ground. It didn't receive. <laughs> you can have all kinds of fire to this building without a ground. All kinds of fire. You gotta have a ground. And a lot of folks want to run without a ground. Let the ground go out in the headlight. They gonna go out. You gotta get that old ground. It takes time to get finger to that rail. They don't have rails now. Just time to some of that. I don't know what they're gonna ground them with. That's why, brother, they get them all plastic. Do you? I don't know. I don't know. I got a new one out there. Two thirds of it's plastic. I mean, in the last four years, they put ever so much more plastic on. Them. So let the wood down. You gotta be careful. You're not gonna buck them. Amen. God, help us. Lord, let me, let me just go on a little bit more here. Here, here now was Job. And we've heard Job so much, so, you know, it's just kind of something that we don't pay much mind to if we're not careful. But here was Job, and as long as he was blessed, but the dog, he, he just had all kinds of friends. When he went into town, they would they would they would put their hands over their mouths and they'd say, "Here comes Mr. Job," and, and 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 young men honored him, and they looked at him as a teacher, as a leader. And the Bible teach, teaches that he was eyes to the blind, he was feet to the cripple. And if he heard about a matter, somebody didn't have food or shelter, he went and sought it out and supplied their needs. But when he lost everything he had. His wife even looked at him and said, why don't you curse God and just die? And I don't think she said it that easy. I think she just said, oh man, why don't you forget it, curse God and die? He said, woman, you talk like one of them foolish women. Uh -huh. yeah. But through it all, you know a lot of times we want God to bless us, but we don't want to go through nothing to get the blessing. That, 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 that's not Bible. You can't have that. Joseph had to go through hell. Be thrown in an empty well. Be drawn out. Sold to the Midianite. Taken him on and sold him. Potiphar sold him to... He was sold to Potiphar as a slave. Lied on. Put in prison. And if that boy had a right to get bitter, if anybody had a right...
when they brought him out, he knew how to be lieutenant governor. Job went through all of these hells. Had 11,000. And what was it? 500 head of cattle. But when he went through the battle and came out, he had 23,000 head. God doubled it. God wants to bless some of us, but we can't take the persecution. I said one time, even in my ministry, I thought, Lord, I don't know how I was praying, but God said, I can't bless you like I want to. He said, you can't stand the battle. Somebody walk up and give us a new Rolls Royce. Somebody else say, look at that old stuck up preacher. That would take the Rolls Royce out of the place. See, we couldn't stand the God would bless us with a lot more stuff. But we couldn't stand We couldn't take the persecution. Men that are blessed are persecuted. Even men that labors and toils and, and accumulated four or five farms and they got they got they got money. But no dead head that ain't hit a lick at nothing. Look at him saying. He ought to be in my shoes. Uh -huh. And this fellow got up before daylight, running till he wore his fingers out nearly, uh -huh. getting what he got. Uh -huh. And then that dude that's laid in the bed and got kids by five different women. Come on. And don't pay a dime alimony. And going to the mailbox every month and getting uh, uh, some fellow went in a while back going to get a job with the, one of our church people. He's got a business. Said, well, "What do you work at?" He said, "I believe it." Him, he said, "Oh, I work for the government." I go to the mailbox once a month. And then he's probably too lazy to go get that. He probably wants somebody to bring that to him. Amen. But the dog, I, I get aggravated sometimes when I see these fellows driving better cars than I do. Amen. And me have to pay for it. And you have to pay for it. Uh, Amen. But here was Job. I, I, I can see when all hell had come against him. And he done pretty good. The, the, and, and the devil made it look like it was God doing it. You said, well, how's that going? Said fire has come down out of heaven and burned up your sheep. The wind from the wilderness has hit the four corners of your elder son's house and all of your kids are dead. It looks like it's God doing it. He said, even though he's saying that. Yes. I believe what Job was saying. God, I don't really know whether you even like me or not. But I'm going to serve you whether you do or not. I believe that's what he was saying. Yeah. I'm going to serve you whether you like me or not. And your word says you've got to let me come to heaven. But he could take it. He buried ten kids. Fresh graves on the hill. Everything that had been took. His wife had turned her back on him. But he kept his integrity. Balls got all over his body and he never said anything about let the day be cursed that I was born till them balls got all over his body. If the devil can get you by robbing you, he'll put a sickness on your body that you think you cannot make it. But God turned all of this thing around. And I preached a message a while back until you and I become broken. We can't help nobody spiritually. Jesus had to be broken before he could save folks. And you and I can't bless people and help them till we get broken in our spirit. How many understand that? I'm talking about being broken. 
I'm talking about being humble. I'm talking about being having compassion. Job didn't read where he ever helped anybody spiritually till he got broken. Then he was able to lay hands on them, them old accusers and set them free. And God healed him while he was praying for his enemies. They had to come and bow at Job's feet. God said he'll make your enemies. He'll set your table in the presence of your enemies. When the devil comes in like a flood, the Bible said the Lord will raise up a standard against the devil through you. And God wants to bless us sometimes, and we won't let it. Because we can't bear the reproach. In some of my greatest revivals, there always was a great persecution with it. Especially in the tents. But as long as God wasn't moving, there wasn't much going on, and we were fasting and praying to have a breakthrough, the devil never done nothing. As soon as we got a breakthrough, he started yakking all over the place and doing everything to stop it. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't, he ain't gonna sit down. He never takes a vacation. I don't think. Neither does Jesus. And he's with us. Jesus is with us, whether we feel it, whether we know it or not. What I'm trying to show you. He is not going to allow you to go through anything unless he goes through it with you. Here was Paul and Silas sitting in a pool of blood, being whipped. Did you know, no doubt, the devil coming in and said, Boy, if God loved you, this wouldn't have happened to you. If God wanted this church here, it went up a lot better. You wouldn't have had no battle. No, no. Everything in the world is going to happen. That's right. Everything. A friend of mine started a church in Barberville, Kentucky. And, and he, big church, he got all the trusts up. And somebody left something loose in one place. And all them trusts dominoed and fell on him. And he just barely got out of them. But the next morning, he got up going through the rubble. Trying to salvage and get it back out. Start building again. Everything happened out But he made it. Now he's got one of the most beautiful churches. Big cathedral type. Lamin laminated ceiling. And a few years ago when I went in there, they'd fight Jesus' name like they was fighting tigers. And now we can have revival there, and that church will be nearly full of Jesus' name, folks. And them it ain't Jesus' name is afraid to say they're not. Because there's too many there. That is Jesus. We paid a price, but we won. We paid a price, but we won. Paul and Silas, I can see him sitting. I believe with all my heart they're sitting in a pool of blood. They beat them. Whipped. I can see old Paul said, Let's pray. Had in the morning started praying and said, I feel like saying. Let's say. Begin to sing. And then they tell me, they said, <clears throat> they say they think that Jesus got the pat in his foot. And the Bible said the earth is his footstool. Heaven's his throne. And it caused the earthquake. His feet's on earth and he sits in heaven. There was an earthquake, yes. The jail trembled. And then when the jailer grabbed his sword and was going to kill himself, Paul said, don't do yourself no harm, sir. We're all here. We're all here. Came out of it with victory. Came out of it with joy. God went through it with us. Here was the Hebrew boys being thrown in the fiery furnace. They were thrown in, hit the floor, or hit the deck, wherever they hit. Now I can see one of them. Shadrach, you burn. Me, Jack. Who, who's he? Jesus, come on in, boys. I've been here waiting for it. Now, them going into the fire furnace caused people to believe in their God. And they didn't know what they was going to die. In fact, about it, I, they probably thought they're dead when they begin to feel their sadness. And they're just seeing about it. But Jesus was waiting for them. 
Listen, I'm trying to tell you tonight, it don't matter where you stand this evening, as long as you live in for God. And the Lord's on your side. David said, I'll not fear what man can do uh, 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 to me, because the Lord is on my side. Top show sheets. <laughs> Brother Isaac, I have been to the place that I had to hold my head when I prayed. It felt like that. The pressure was so great that it felt like I was going to explode. And if God didn't hear, I couldn't go another end. But heaven would fall. Just when I'd ran the last inch I could run, heaven would fall. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give out. It's not that we're sinning. It's not that we're doing something wrong. We give everything. We, I, I've, I've preached under the tent. Give everything that I've got to the people. The next day, go out in the woods to pray. Feel nothing. And people got healed the night before, miracles. Ball and cry and crawl on my hands and knees through the woods. Where are you, God? And in a minute, it was like an earthquake. The woods would almost seem like begin to shake. And heaven would begin to fall. Sometimes God wants to see if we're hungry. He wants to see if we're willing to beg Him to fill us up again to where we can give to the people again. If you never give nothing out, you don't know how you don't know how to be blessed. Bible said, "Give, and it shall be given to you." That's not just talking about money. If you give your time and your anointing to others to bless them, God is going to give to them. Am I preaching today? Amen. God is going to give to you. And then many times we don't feel like we're doing nothing for God. But we're not the one keeping record. And actually, we if if, if we're really where we ought to be, where we ought to be, most of the time we feel unprofitable. And that's the way we ought to. And, and if we ever reach that place we feel like we got it made, we just missed. Ladies and gentlemen, they're going to be battles. And somebody said, well, I don't want to go in this. That they're going to be, well, you're going to have battles in the world. You're going to overdose. You're going to have come up with lung cancer. You're going to come up with cirrhosis of the liver. Different things. If you do what the devil says do. AIDS. Gonorrhea. Different things. But if you're living for God, when you hit these battles, you got somebody to help you. How many know when you're in the world, you had nobody to help you? Oh, your buddies drank with you. They, 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 they take your last nickel, pat you on the back and tell you you're a good old buddy. But when you run out of money, they went somewhere else. Amen. But Jesus won't leave you like that. He'll stay with you when you ain't got enough. Because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Stand with me. I hope I've said something tonight to help somebody. I don't know most of you folks. I know, I just know Brother Doug here. I don't know him. I just been around him a little. He don't really know me. The only way we know each other is by the Spirit. Amen. Paul said he didn't desire to know anybody after the flesh. And that's what's happened today to a lot of churches. They know too, they know each other after the flesh. But I'd rather just know somebody after the Spirit. I wonder tonight. Maybe there's maybe there's something. We just recently saw a family that had been gone from our church for years. And they left not on good terms. They was offended at the stand that I'd taken in the church. You can't just allow everything going in the church. You can't let kids lay in the aisle and color use color books while the preacher preached. A friend of mine the other day said they went to a place and this little boy, he run up down the aisle. Finally, when the preacher got to preach, he come up here and started climbing the Bible stand. Amen. Looked the preacher right in the eyeball face while he preached. 
And the banker said, well, somebody said to sit down. Woman came, grabbed and jammed him on the seat. And the next night, there wasn't nobody there but the evangelist and his friend. That ain't being saved. That ain't being saved. If you want to church, start on time. Keep the kids sitting on the pews. Don't let them play in the aisles. Don't let them run. God will bless you. God will honor you. And, 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 and people that don't want to come under those circumstances, they're not going to Amen. 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 If you read in the Bible, in the Old Testament, things had to be perfect before God would even show up. I mean, things had to be right. And I believe things have still got to be right before God will show up. we got to have the right atmosphere before God will show up. But if we'll get the right atmosphere, somebody said, well, that kid bothers him. It ain't that the kid may bother evangelists. But there may be a sinner sitting over here that would get saved. And the kid took his mind off of God. And that sinner would go to hell because mama let that kid play in the aisles of the church. And that mama will stand in judgment if she don't get forgiven. Amen, Brother Stephen. I've pastored for 35, going 36 years. I know a little bit about it. I've pastored the same church for 30 years. And God still blessed us. But I know why. We stand for truth. We let only people in there that stands for truth. You can defile the pulpit. And God won't move. It'll take you months to get your pulpit cleaned out again. Even though the people ain't there. It'll take you months to get rid of the spirit. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching tonight. I'm preaching. I wonder tonight if there's a need. Now I want to tell about this little family. They came back a few nights ago all their son owned dope now. They expelled him from school. She was with them. Their daughter, big mass around her liver, tumor. Mama looked like she'd been crying for two weeks. Came in there and they fell in the altar. And there was about four got back to God before 7.30. We started 7. And that little girl with the mass around her liver, she got a little baby. She said, I want to be healed. Prayer was given for her. And then a few weeks later, she was operated on for gallstones. And they didn't find no tool. It was gone. She testified of being healed. I'm saying if God did it for her, then what is the too big for God to do for you? All of them got back to God that night. Son wept, cried, been smoking crack. Daughters, mama, mama said it's so good to be back home. Cried. Honey, when you got a good church, you get out there, you'll get wolf bed. But but if but if you're serious, it'll run you back home. It'll run you back home. And that wasn't all they had a grandbaby to get run over and different things. Children? You'll get in trouble if you leave a good church. You'll get in trouble. You better stay where the word's being preached. A lot of places, brother, I think they just want a lot of blessings and singing. Singing's good and it's important and it's neat. But the word is the most important thing of the ministry. The word's more important than getting people out of wheelchairs. Because you're not careful. The devil, you can shout all night tonight and the devil will knock you in the head in the morning. But if you get a hold of the word, he may knock you, but you can come up fighting in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But if you shout it, all you can do is say, Devil, I shouted like that. He said, I did too. I spoke in tongues. He said, I did too. But he can't take the word. He can quote the word, but he can't live right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he can't live right. He can out preach Brother Doug or me, the one, or out sing any of you, but he can't live right. Is there anybody got a need in your prayer for your children, for financial need, for anything? Right quick. I'm here to believe God with you. I don't have no miracles in the bag, but I've got Jesus inside of me. And I've seen him perform, I've seen him 
I've seen him do great things, and he didn't send me out here to tell you what I'd seen him do. He sent me out here to tell you what he will do. Amen. Anybody got a need of any kind? Anybody? It don't matter what it is. Somebody said, well, if you got something wrong with your body, how do you expect somebody to get healed if you pray for them? Well, I know of two people. The prophet of God and his wife had a wreck. And he laid his hands over on her during the wreck, prayed for her, and she lived, and he died. God healed her, and he died. Amen. There's been a many of a person prayed for somebody else and they themselves, their bodies, not in much shape at all, but God healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'd rather have somebody that's been through some hell to pray for me if somebody's never had a back. Because they don't know how to have compassion if they've never had a back. Somebody came up to me a while back with an accident of service. This thing hit a little girl. And she's a preacher's daughter, and she'd sing all of her life. Went to church and stood for God, and I saw the thing. And it was the same thing that hit me. looked like the same thing that hit me 30 years ago in a service. And I'd have to get up and leave church. And it tried to get a hold of my body, and then, then it tried to tell me I was going to die with a heart condition. And I rebuked that thing. I said, Devil, I know what you are. And God moved that thing. She was smothering the devil. Just a little... Girl, 20, 20 years old. Way about 105 pounds. 40. God, you hear these requests. Oh, Help us pray. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God, I speak your word. No one of He is God. Lord, I now did your show called in the Messiah. Victory, God, in spite of all hell. Victory, God, for these requests. Work a miracle, God, as you see fit. In the name of Jesus, we ask. Thank you, God, for hearing us right now. Oh, in that time, she could have. Somebody else. You won't practice. Anybody? I want everyone of us just gather down front here. All the Christians. Quickly. I want you to just get a hold of hands and let's pray. Let's let, let, just get a hold of hands with somebody there. And let, let, let's pray that God will bring some lost people, Brother Doug. Yeah. That God will bring some backsliders. Amen. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, time is running oh, yes, out. Lord. Yeah, yeah. And we're so close to the end. Most folks don't even know. Most church folks don't even know. We're so close to the end, it's not fun. And the Bible has put, I mean, we can pinpoint it right here in this book. I can read you some scripture right here in this book. That's something that's got to happen in two more years. In a few days. According to this book. That's the truth. According to the book. That's the truth. And the book don't lie. Something's got to happen. I'm not saying the Lord's going to appear in two more years. But something is about, I'm, I'm saying he can appear in the next two minutes. Amen. It don't have to be two years. And I preach to our people, live every minute like you're going to die the next. And you'll be ready when he calls. Hallelujah. I want us to pray right now. Oh. And bind every old spirit that would try to hinder folks from coming to this revival. Oh. God send that backslider. Send that one God that don't know what to do. Lord, they've sought the booze. They've sought the drugs. Even that backslidden preacher. Bring them back. In these meetings, set him free. Lord, that little mama that's quit and don't want to serve you anymore, bring her back. God. Bring that young man back, Lord, that daughter, that son. In the name of Jesus Christ, God, send the people that needs to hear the word in this revival. We presented ourselves, Lord. Brother Isaac's opened the doors. We've driven here, God. Now you send the people, God, that needs to, that needs to hear the word, Lord. It needs to be filled with the Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Holy God, I praise you. 
God, I don't know. I honor you, God. I glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I see people now. What, what, what really blesses, Brother Doug? I was preaching the other night in a camp meeting in Arkansas, right down out of Missouri. Big church. Hundreds of people there. And a missionary, a young lady, sitting there in front of my wife. On the message I was on, she looked at my wife and she said, I ain't never seen that. I said, God, thank you for giving somebody something through me, a revelation that they've never seen. That's what, that's what going to church is all about. You see, when you come to church, you may not feel you even got anything. But you get your garden sprayed. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. If you've got your ground broke up, there may be some seed from that preacher's lips fall in your garden. And in a few months, something happens in your family and you can reach back and pull faith from that message you heard that you didn't even feel lifted up about. It sowed some seed Amen. in your garden. Amen. 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 Yeah. And I, I, I've gone to meetings, never got called out, never got prophesied to. And every night, I felt myself getting a little high. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I've been preaching for 30 something years. Well, what's this? How in the world could you? And his little woman preaching. It's my inward man. Amen. Just because we're men, that don't mean we don't have needs. Amen. I, I'll take the word of God if it's a donkey preaching it. Amen. You know, we get a lot of men today, they're macho, they don't need nothing. But you know what macho is in Spanish? Mule. <laughs> so I don't guess we'll be macho no more. <laughs> Glory. Somebody feel like you got something tonight from the book? Amen. Amen. I did. Sometimes I, I, I get something just preaching it. And I said, My God, I ain't never seen that, Lord. Thank you for that. And then when I need it, I've got it. You can be seated. We appreciate being here tonight. We, we, we just... Brother Doug, I promised God that I would go anywhere I'm called. That is, if God says, you know, if, if, if God don't say, go. Now, there may be some places we're called that God says, go. But I try to go everywhere I'm called, big crowds, little crowds, offerings or no offerings, it don't matter. Because... God's in control. Amen. Give your pastor and Jesus a great big chair. Y'all got a beautiful church here. And I felt a beautiful spirit tonight. And I believe we're having revival. Amen. Amen. We know a lot of people had church tonight. We're, we, we didn't get to send out any cards this time. Or oh, there'd have been probably a few come. Because we sent out cards. But... We want to just preach to the church, to the people that wants this for the church. It don't matter if there's 12, 20, or 40, or 50. That's what it's all about. Amen. We first started our church, we'd have 20, 30, 40. And then God just got to bless it, bless it, bless it, bless it. Amen. And he's still blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Amen. Let's give uh, uh, Lord and Brother Stevens a good hand, will you?